The golden rule is defined as the principle of treating others as you would want to be treated. It's a maxim that is found in most religions and cultures. It is in some ways a single ethic of reciprocity, so much so that in 1993, 143 leaders of the world's major faiths endorsed it as a part of the Declaration Toward a Global Ethic. Although the premise is not based in religion or a belief in God necessarily, it is an ethical tradition, being a good person, a good citizen. Most of us want to be treated with respect, kindness, and heart. You'll soon learn that our featured organization today is determined to make this connection and to take it to heart. Pun, you'll soon learn, intended, as her organization, Heart Centered Strategies Corp., has taken on an effort to save the world, a lofty but truly noble intention, and her unending belief that we can do this if we do it together is in line with our thinking as well. Her desire is to use technology to create a heart-centered world, and although for-profit, its vision clearly fits into our mission. Welcome to Small and Gutsy, a podcast featuring interviews with nonprofit and social impact organizations under $10 million. My name is Laura Whitkoff, and I'm excited and proud to be your host. My hope is that you love the stories as much as we do, and perhaps you will find needed services, a job, volunteer, or donate. Feel free to pass along any valuable information you hear on this podcast to others, and remember to send me the name of any organization you'd like featured at reachus at the intrinsic group.com. Heart-Centered Strategies Corp., the ingenious idea of founder and CEO Dr. Julia Harrison, launched in May of 2020, during the heart of the pandemic, no pen intended this time. This pandemic has changed most of our collective thinking, and Dr. Harrison is no exception. This ideation emerged as part of her doctorate work in social change and innovation for my alma mater as well, the Suzanne DeVorek Peck School of Social Work, so I know it's good. Their tagline is a new tech company for a heart-centered world, and I truly hope that that tagline is an indication of things to come. One particular thing that is already here is their development of an app called iShared, already in the Google Play Store, and as soon as it's available in the Apple Store, I am downloading it. We all have things we don't need and things we need. iShared offers all of us the opportunity to reduce our carbon footprint by offering what we have for others and requesting things we need, all in our local area. This saves people money and strengthens community neighbor relationships by creating a large network of free goods and services. This is not just a sharing app that is part of the great work of Heart Centered Strategies Corp, but a sharing movement that we can all and should join. I am so very excited to introduce my guest today, founder and CEO of Heart Centered Strategies Corp and fellow doctorate, Dr. Julia Harrison. So let's get started. Welcome, Julia. I'm so excited to have you here, not just because you're a fellow doctorate, but truly because of the work that you're doing. So share with me your passion, how you got this idea, how it started, whatever you want to. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Laura Whitkoff, for the beautiful introduction and summarizing exactly what we're doing at Heart Centered Strategies Corp. I'm excited to share what we're doing and the information about where the idea came from. So it was actually my second semester at USC when I was um, impacted by a national disaster, the Russian River flood in Northern yeah. California. So um, I, uh, at that time, lost nearly all of my possessions and was homeless at the time, unhoused. Uh, luckily, I was able to find people in my local area that I didn't know that were willing to take me and my little cat in. And wow. you know, while I was going through that triumphant experience, I kept thinking, you know, there really should be an app for this. You know, there should be an app for me to connect with people in my community and be able to, you know, get the things that people are wanting to donate at the thrift stores and be able to you know, get those things for myself and start building my life back together. And, um, and it was during that a harrowing survivor experience that I was able to come up with the idea for the app I shared and was very much um, given the opportunity 
through USC to develop that idea and to do the research behind it and to really see what are the impacts that this type of movement could have. That's what really got me going and it, what continues to move me and my organization forward. Uh, it's not only uh, my organization's uh, social mission to uh, impact people in a positive way by reducing the global emissions and in instituting a, a sharing movement across the world, but it's also my personal mission because I know how, how beneficial that would be to so many people who are in struggle right now. I definitely want to impact people in a positive way and reduce struggle, uh, reduce strife, that you know, those de determinants of stress and strife you know, cause so many other types of uh, illness, social illness, physical illness, you know, personal illness. So you know, sharing, in my opinion, is really what is needed at this time. And the global pandemic, uh, has definitely set the perfect stage for this to um, reveal itself and to become yeah. a part of our social structure. And hopefully when everything is uh, opened up and people are able to you know, go into their communities freely, safely, and are willing to communicate with people that they haven't seen in a while, get a little closer to each other, you know, that this app is gonna be really integral to helping people reconnect. So we're for excited sure. about the vision for this work. Yeah, I just need to comment that, first of all, I'm so sorry that happened to you. I had no idea. And, you know, sometimes when disaster strikes, and literally you had a disaster, you really think about what's key and what's important. And several things sort of came up in the awareness as you were sharing your story for me. One is the beauty of um, the interdependence we are as a community that was so um, visceral, as you were telling your story for me, around people stepping up and really giving you what you needed to survive. And then the second piece is, is your kind of light bulb awareness is why aren't we naturally doing this? When we lived in tiny little villages, and there are communities like this, I know they exist, it was sort of that natural give and take. And so what you're really creating is a look back with a futuristic forward tech piece, right? A building back of our community and the idea of helping one another using technology in the most beneficial way, not just the reduction of carbon footprint, which is so essential to our environment, but really that neighborly feeling of what does someone else need and how can I accommodate them? And when I'm in need, they'll be there for me too. I, I just love it. It's amazing. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, it, we definitely see it as a, a new future that we can all create together. And it, and it requires our cooperation, our collaboration, our you know collective mission together to see this forward. So we're hoping to bring this awareness to a lot of people. For sure. And it's it could be global, for sure. It's easy, right? That's so easy. So tell me how you got this idea. You started to put it in practice. I know you launched uh, a year ago, May. Tell me a little bit about sort of that setting it up and sort of where are you now? Uh, so just walk us through the story. Sure. Um, so I graduated in August of last year from USC. So uh, in May, I launched the, the foundation or founded the company. And um, then we continued to move forward with the application. Uh, I had to hire developers because I'm not a developer myself. I'm a designer. I see systems and I see how to redesign systems. So I've been lucky to find uh, the greatest people I've been able to to see this vision forward. And uh, it, the application was published in Google Play at the end of last year. There's still some um, features that we're working on. It's a very rudimentary, um, you know, list the things that you have, list the things that you need kind of thing. And you connect with people in your community, send them a message. Hey, you know, you do have this couch that you're willing to give away. You know, can I have the couch? You know, what does it look like? That kind of thing. And it's also envisioned to be able to um, enable communities to literally share items. So instead of having 50 different um, lawnmowers in, in a cul-de-sac, you know, let's have one or two and people are able to share and negotiate negotiate, you know, when can I use it? You know, because why do we have so much stuff? We don't need to have so much stuff. We have enough for everybody. We just need to spread it around. So we're currently continuing to work on, you know, developing the, the marketplace aspect of the app and uh, getting social media marketing, uh, getting funding. Uh, currently, we're uh, doing a uh, ifundwomen.com campaign. Uh, so that was just launched very recently. So anybody that wants to check us out there can check us out on the website, www dot heart centered strategies 
www.ifundwomen.org um, or ifundwomen.com. Um, so there's definitely uh, a lot of support that we need presently because it's I've bootstrapped the entire uh, endeavor myself. Um, so I've taken a couple of loans, uh, small business loans, and had some support, but sold some of my possessions to be able to fund the app. And so it's it's been a passion project, but now you know we really need the, the community support. If they right. do indeed want to see this vision forward with us as well, we need people to step up and support. For sure. I mean, I love that, you know, this was so much part of your own heart that you funded it. But at some point, you have to support the infrastructure. You have to support the continued development. And actually, I want to highlight something really important. It's not just your own things that you want to give away or that you need, but it's also building a community around something that you don't need every day, like your example of a lawnmower. I think that's a brilliant idea. None of us need to have it in our own garages. And yet, if we could share it within our environment, it saves tremendously and allows us to communicate with our neighbors. You know, I think one of the things the pandemic has sadly done is really created this level of isolation. And as many of us are getting vaccinated and hopefully we're getting back to sort of a new normal, not the old normal, there will be room for this because I think we've realized so much of what we've done without to an extent, but we've missed that physical connection with other people. And when you're exchanging items to either be shared or giving or receiving, it's a way of really having that fundamental feel good, but also that community engagement. And I really love that that's really the premise of what you're doing. Yeah, definitely. Um, social isolation has increased significantly since the pandemic, and it and has so many negative um, outcomes. You know, physical health, mental health, um, even just people's ability to to do their daily living. Um, yeah. You know, so it's really important for people to have those those connections, and so we hope that people are able to you know have that first connection by you know sharing a lawnmower or yeah. you know giving some extra tomatoes in their garden away to a neighbor. But we hope yeah. those those relationships develop and continue to bloom. That's really um, you know our our greatest um, vision. Yeah, I love it because it's really creating a global community of sharing and giving and reciprocity. And it kind of, you know, in some way, it's like the old fashioned, one of my favorite kind of get togethers to go to is a potluck. Right? That's exactly, doc, Dr. Laura, that is exactly what it is for me. I love that. And so I was actually uh, raised Mennonite. So I grew up in, in Pennsylvania and the East Coast. And, you know, that's what that's what we did. You know, everybody brought what they had together and you had yeah. the, the biggest celebration. And this is that same kind of aspect, you know, what can we do when we bring everything to the table and say, hey, you know, friends and neighbors, you know, this is what I have to share. And um, what do you have to share? And then we have so much more and greater quality of life together than we do separate. Mm -hmm. So although we were in the same doctoral program, I graduated a couple years before you. However, so this is the first time I'm learning a little bit more about you. I went to school at Dickinson College in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. So we were very near the Mennonite, and I dated a, a, a very nice man, young man, um, from Lancaster. That's where I was born, in Lancaster, yeah. Oh, that's too funny. Very big farm country, the Amish and Mennonite. Beautiful, beautiful. I would have ended up sort of in that region, but I ended up going overseas and then ending up in Boston. But that area of the country is one of my very favorites. So we'll have to like catch up offline. Isn't that funny? So and I and I grew up in the Midwest and, you know, potluck and supporting one another, and, you know, baking people cakes when they move into the neighborhood was sort of my kind of upbringing. So I get that too. And, um, and love that. And I love that you've really created this absolute global effort to be able to make it a big global potluck, if I can say it like that, right? Oh, I, I love that vision. That's exactly what I would love to see. So this algorithm that you've created asks people a series of questions. They put in their needs and what they can offer, and then you localize it through zip code or through... That's exactly how it works. So people are able to identify, you know, within a radius, say the 20 miles, 2 miles, you know, 200 miles, if you're looking for maybe something that's a little bit bigger, like a car. But yeah, people are able to identify who, who you know, what does their community consist of? Is it a 10 mile radius? And then find those people that are that are sharing what they need and alternatively needing what they're sharing um, and, and connect with them and match. And you get a little notification, you know, good good news, there's free stuff available for you. So it's, it's a really 
It's designed to be a really feel-good experience of, of sharing in abundance. And mm -hmm. we definitely need that as a community, as a culture since the pandemic. You know, so much of our resources have been restricted. So this would be, you know, such an awesome movement to, to get as many people as, you know, we can. So many of us have so much that we don't use. Uh, I'm guilty of that for sure. And so would love to be able to give stuff away. And it's in some way, it doesn't take away from people who drop off at other at thrift places or Goodwill. It's just another mechanism. And I think there's so much to go around. It just adds value. And knowing that the beauty of what you're doing is you actually visually see this person who's receiving. When you drop things off at Goodwill, you get a receipt, and I understand the benefit, but you don't really get the warmth that you get from seeing someone who's like, oh, I would love this pair of jeans. This is exactly what I need, or this couch, or this table. It's a wonderful opportunity for people to share in that way. I really love that. Yeah, that, that's so true. And during my research at USC, you know, I learned and uh, surveyed people that I knew about that, and nearly everybody said they would prefer to give to somebody they, they knew or even didn't know rather than donate to a thrift store because that personal connection and to see that benefit right away is, is, is very rewarding for both yeah. parties. You mentioned, you know, um, the pandemic, but even your own disaster, the level of stress that one experiences through going through a hardship and the reduction of that stress and this is also true, by the way, in what I've learned around addiction, is it's really about connection. It's about human connection that allows for healing. And so on top of what you're physically being able to offer folks, I think you're also offering a an ability to cope more effectively with the stress of a disaster or the stress of a current situation or the pandemic and the benefits of being able to give for those of us who might have an abundance, and I'd love for you to comment on any, you know, research or observations or focus groups that you've done in that arena. Well, thanks so much for pointing that out because part of the concept for the app was to create a safety net. Because I was a, um, a student, you know, at USC in California from the East Coast, so I didn't have a lot of connections, social connections, and in my second semester. I was like, wow, I'm, I'm in a place I don't know anybody really, because I had only been in my uh, house uh, for like six weeks when that happened. So I really wow. had like no, no connection. So it was an atypical situation, a disaster, but people still might feel some empathy with that if, if they too don't have a safety net or, or move to a new city and they don't know a lot of people. So um, so yeah, that, that was um, part of, of the app's creation as well, is to create that safety net of that, that support, you know, financial, you know, uh, goods and services, but also emotional, hoping those relationships will bloom into more. Just knowing that somebody in your community is like, here, here's how you need, you need clothes, you need food, you need, you know, this or that, you know, that there are people there that are willing to give. Um, yeah. I think it'll be really positive for a lot of people in, in, in dealing with um, social isolation and um, just having a lack of, of support that they may not see immediately. You know, the app is there to kind of remind people, no, there's so many people out there that want to give and want to share and want to be there for people. They don't know that who needs the help. You know, unless right. you're talking to everybody in your community, nobody knows that you need certain type of help. So this is a way for people to, you know, get the help they need and to, you know, share and, and what they might have extra. Mm. Even yeah. like, you know, I mean, I barely could ask, I didn't know how to ask people for help. I didn't right. know how to, you know, like, right. you know. We're like, not used to it. We're yeah. used to giving help, right? We're yeah, social workers. We're exactly. Used to yeah, and we're like, not used to accepting. The other thing that occurs to me as we're talking is because it's an app that goes both ways, give and take, people can go on the app and say, I have these items to give away or I have these services to give away, which I'll, I'll ask about in a second. I think it takes away the stigma of shame because it's really hard to ask for help or to, as you point out, to know who in your neighborhood may be alone or needing help and not really. So by creating this, you're, I think you're taking away that stigma because if I go on, it becomes this mutual interdependence, which is what a neighborhood should really be like. So I don't know if I'm hitting on something. I see you nodding your head. So <laughs> go. That's exactly right. Um, you know, being able to create that interdependence is, is really important. And even on the app, it's, it has some uh, features to make sure that people are safe and, and they're, you're, able to, you're able to see, you know, how another person that you match with has interacted with a community member, if they're trustworthy, if they came on time, that kind of thing, you know. But it also, you know, 
removes the, like you said, the shame and all of that because there's just little picture avatars. You're matching with, you know, Julia and my little avatar is an elephant. So you don't know what color I am, what, you right. know, what, you it's know. It's not necessary. Yes, right. sexual or none of that matters, you know. Mm -hmm. So the app is designed so that people that can come forward and be able to exchange and interact with people based on needs and the ability to yeah. share and, and all of that other stuff can kind of go by the wayside for the time being. I want to highlight that because I think that's really important. It protects people's identity and confidentiality, but it also, again, registers with me around reducing shame. So I was thinking of it more that we're all vulnerable and we're all vulnerable together. And once you kind of sign up, you're part of that community. But the other key piece is that we're not there to judge folks by taking a look at them. So everyone has an avatar, you can create your own name and then however you figure out that meeting point, there may be safety, but you get to know that someone received your services or your, your goods. And when we talk about services, can you give any goods are sort of easy for me to visualize. Services may be a little bit less so. Certainly someone coming to shovel my neighbor's driveway who was an older, you know, woman who wasn't going to be able to do it herself. It's just a service we'd naturally do in the in the neighborhood. So I don't know if that's the way you're thinking or. Definitely. You know, at Heart Centered Strategies, we see every human being as a value. So so whatever a person's able to do can become their service that they provide. You know, my thinking was that, um, you know, younger families might need child care. So older uh, folks might be willing to provide some child care and um, older folks might need some help with fixing houses, that kind of thing. So there's a, there's two levels. There's skilled work and then there's unskilled or unlicensed so mm -hmm. so it's it runs the gamut from if there's you know somebody in your community that's willing to you know like a cosmetologist to cut hair in exchange mm -hmm. for you know other services and goods um, versus somebody that's just you know maybe does a does loves to cook and mm -hmm. wouldn't mind coming and cooking you know for your family you know whatever it is you know we want to bring passion to the forefront for everybody so that everybody is able to utilize their passion and um, you know live their their life's um, purpose so whatever that is or whatever makes people the happiest, we want you know to give them that opportunity to, to share that as a service. What I love about that is it's almost going back to a barter system as well. And also it sounds like for folks, it could be temporary. Like if someone like yourself was going through a very tough time because of a disaster, you just needed temporary assistance and then to get back on your feet and then you could carry on. And that's a wonderful gift. And I can only imagine how not only has this been created out of that horrible situation, but also the community and friendships that were formed as a result of people stepping up. I don't know if that's true for you. I'm surmising that, but I would imagine. Oh, definitely. And those connections I still have today. I had a wonderful older couple take me and my little cat in for three months before we were able to wow. relocate to the Central Valley. So. So we were able to, to stay there and become a part of their lives. Uh, you know, they didn't have children. I definitely felt like I needed that parental, you know, energy because I was by myself in California. You know, my family's all on the East Coast. So it was really a win-win situation. And I experimented with the idea before, you know, developing the app, you know, based on my own life experience. It is so remarkable in so many ways that this did come out of such a negative experience, but that negative experience had really silver linings. And we often hear, you know, and I've certainly said on the podcast that nobody would wish a pandemic or a disaster on anyone. And yet I think there have been some beautiful silver lining stories that have emerged from uh, folks being put in situations that they never imagined themselves to be in. And so if folks can sign up for this, app and be part of that healing and part of that receiving from others because it really is both it's, it's hard to receive sometimes as it can be to um to give sometimes it's hard for people to receive because of that stigma and so to take that away is really a gift for so many folks share with me anything else about heart-centered strategies corp or I shared app, just anything that comes to mind that you want to. We definitely would, would love for anybody that's willing to come forward and provide financial support. We're looking for investors currently. Um, you know, we, we decided to become a for-profit, although I have a background in nonprofit management and was an um, executive director for several nonprofits in, in my day. Being able to be for-profit allows us to make decisions and, and meet the needs of the community very quickly rather than having a large board 
forward. So while we're social impact and we're pre-revenue, you know, we, we see the value that we have as, as, as something that's, um, you know, you can't really put the, like a money value on it. It's so, right. it's, it's just invaluable, you know, the type of work that we are wanting to do. So we're looking for those people that have those social impact hearts to help support us financially mm -hmm. and become part of our, our team. Yeah, anybody that's listening out there that's interested, please contact me, Julia at heartcenteredstrategies.org. I would love to have a conversation with you. Yeah, I love that. I think it's great. I, listen, our podcast, it's for the smaller sector and it's for folks like you as well as the nonprofit sector because you're making a social impact. You're going to reduce the carbon footprint. You are bringing people together. You are creating something that goes back to the barter neighborly system, but using tech as an avenue. So I think it fits absolutely perfectly into that. So folks can go on your website, iShared app, or they can actually download on an Android, do I have that right? Yes. And soon to be, because I have an iPhone, I will download it as soon as it's available, which you are expecting when? In the I next couple of months, um, right. definitely through the, by the end of the summer. And the other thing I wanted to say is there may be other apps that do a little bit of like this, here's my free stuff, come pick it up or whatever, but you take it a step further. It's really an engagement and it's goods and services and it's really rebuilding that neighborhood feel. And so I really want to emphasize that uh, because I know there are other apps where you can just, you know, pick things up that other people don't want, but this doesn't feel like that to me. This feels very different. It is, and, and we want that social interaction. We don't, um, you know, recommend people mailing stuff to other people. It's more, you know, let's meet at a coffee shop, let's have a conversation, let's, you know, get to know each other a little bit better, and, and let's have an exchange that's more meaningful than just stuff. Yeah, I think it's great. I, I absolutely love it. So are you ready for our quick and gutsy questions? Let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. I love your attitude. You are just filled with great energy. So the first one you had already, you didn't answer this, but you answered the resource piece of it. So most people go there. So thank you for already doing that. We'll do a plug for VCs out there who might want to invest. It'd be great. What is at the top of your wish list for Heart Centered Strategies Corp and iShared as an app? But the answer cannot be money or funding. For the movement to go viral for people to know about what we're doing. I mean, that's why I'm here today, you know, to promote and to get the word out. So we would love for some of our content to be uh, viral and, and go viral globally. It'd be so wonderful if there were other folks around the world who were able to um, pick up the, the app and be able to do it within their regions, which is what your algorithm is designed to do. It's great. If you were to think of a song that describes your organization, what would it be? It would probably be Imagine by John Lennon. Fall. I love that one. That's great and so true because this was something that you imagined out of need and came to fruition and is continuing to blossom and grow. It's great. You've, I think you've touched on this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. What makes your organization gutsy? Because your organization is pretty gutsy in a lot of ways. It's very gutsy, especially in the tech world. Uh, so, you know, we're seeing, we're putting social impact above, you know, monetary um, outcomes. We're putting social outcomes before, you know, what, what investors may see in their bank accounts. So we're definitely wanting to create a new space and we hope that new technology companies put our community and collective well-being at the center of their tech technology companies as well. So, so yeah, we, we won't stop, you know, putting that at the center of what we do. And, you know, we do believe that, you know, once things get going and, and it becomes a global movement, then, you know, the, the money will follow, but that's not the reason that, you know, we're, we're doing this. It's altruistic with the understanding that you have to have money to sustain it and you need to have a following and you're really changing uh, an aspect of the culture that we've lost a little bit of and i think COVID has reminded us how much we miss that so i so appreciate that what is something that outsiders or maybe a few insiders don't know about heart-centered strategies corp and i shared well that um it is myself and two other volunteers and that you know we anticipate that by 2022 that we will have a million subscribers to our app mm -hmm. and that we 
foresee helping you know other communities you know across the world you know potentially um, connecting with large global organizations in developing countries to develop new economic type system because this is a system of sharing mm -hmm. and, and receiving and 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 w while it's altruistic it also you know can become an alternative to some of the monetary uh, systems around the world that are that are falling in in value you know mm -hmm. our human value and what we have is also valuable our our social equity and you know um, our social capital is is very potent I think people may not uh, know that about you know our, our grand grandest vision of of this work really beautifully said i i think that's true so our last quick gutsy question if you could get one celebrity or influencer to endorse or talk about heart-centered strategies corp and i shared who might that be one of my favorites is Lady Gaga. It comes to mind. I mean, if she said everybody get eye shared, I think, you know, it would go really, really fast. Um, I'm not sure if she's known for her environmental work or, or social impact work. But um, but yeah, there are a lot of celebrities as well that um, are, are interested in, in global impact as well. So yeah. um, there's there's probably other names, but Lady Gaga comes to mind right now. So Lady Gaga, if you're listening, please <laughs> shout us out. We're I gonna, shared. We're going to tweet her. <laughs> we're going to hashtag her. She's one of my favorites too for multiple reasons. So let's see. You never know. But I think you're onto something really, uh, really quite amazing and beautiful. And, uh, you know, a lot of times on Facebook and other platforms, there's like this throwback Thursday. Well, you're this throwback to what really is meaningful. And it really is about engagement. And you're using a forward thinking concept and algorithm and you're risking your own hard earned money and your own recovery from your, the disaster and the volunteers. Kudos to them. Uh, you can mention them by name if you want to, because I'd like to give them a shout out for being with you on this journey. Sure. Uh, Ankita and Zach, if you're listening, thank you so much for all the hard work that you've done and continue to do to support the mission. Yeah. Anybody else that would like to volunteer, please contact me. We're always looking for new people. It's just a wonderful mission that you're on, and I do believe you're going to achieve it. I just have high hopes that this is really going to get to where not only you personally want it, but what is really has an impact on our world in a positive way. Any other last comments or thoughts? There's really a possibility here that we all have, and the, the ground is so fertile for that to grow. It could not be more open right now for us all. So if we um, you know, continue to water the seeds that I've planted and we can water it together, you know, then we will have an, a, a great forest, meaning you know, we will have um, a, a community, a global community of people who share and care, mm -hmm. more, more importantly than anything, care about each other. And yeah. that's the world that our heart knows is possible and that we are you know, creating an avenue for. Yeah, it's really a beautiful metaphor. The forest is such a great metaphor. We just have to tend to take care of it, water it, and look what happens. Uh, and again, the best way for po folks to reach out to you and connect with you. Yes. Um, so our main website, heartcenteredstrategies.org, is uh, the organization. But iShared has its own um address as well, I shared, I-S-H-A-R-E-D dot O-R-G. Both are on uh, social media, Facebook, Instagram. You can also contact me personally at Julia at heartcenteredstrategies.org. Um, and I would love to hear from anybody who has any interest. If this has sparked your interest, if you've come across this recording, there is a reason for that. So please, mm -hmm. you know, follow that through. You know, there's nothing by chance in my in my worldview. So, you know, um, definitely contact me if this is sparking your interest and you have any thoughts or ideas or, or want to support us in any way. We'd appreciate it. I just want to thank you so much for spending the time with me. I know you were sort of like, why is she reaching out to me? And why, you know, but I just saw something in that. And so I really want to thank you for taking the time. Thank you for everything you do. I really appreciate your work, Laura. And it's and it's really going to continue to blossom. You know, you're really onto something. You know, the title's really awesome, small and gutsy. You know, it, it's, it's got that 
that chutzpah, if you know yeah. that, you know, like, and that's, yeah. that's what you need to get things out into the world and for them to really grow, you know, yeah. so I appreciate your chutzpah for sure. Thank you. I yeah. think you have it too. It's a Thanks. shared chutzpah. Our blog of these small and gutsy nonprofits and social impact organizations can be found in the organizational stories section of the Intrinsic Group website so that we can continue to link clients, volunteers, future employees, and donors to the Small But Mighty Network. Of course, we can't take responsibility outside of our own vetting of the organizations we interview. So before you sign on to support or work for them, we encourage you to do your own due diligence and research them as well. We just want you to learn about the small and gutsy nonprofit and social impact organizations sector so they can spread their story and their very impactful work. My partners in this endeavor, the Intrinsic Group, a management consulting firm specializing in guiding organizations to leverage talent, optimize processes, and to ensure the organization's narrative is aligned with their culture. The volunteers, my co-producer, sound engineer and composer, Pavel Franson, my graphic designer, Nate Addy, my social work intern extraordinaire, Stephanie Tran. Please check out their bios on the Intrinsic website and all the folks, friends, and family who have guided and inspired me. And thank you for listening. If you like this podcast, please share it with your friends, give us some stars, and write a review on wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you're interested in sponsoring Small and Gutsy to keep it going, please reach out to me at reachus at theintrinsicgroup.com or buy us a coffee at www.buymeacoffee.com backslash small and gutsy. So as you all know, we've started since our 10th episode to give shout outs to all of you who are giving a shout out to us. So here we go. Diesel225 said, I loved the episode about transforming shame and stigma into hope and dignity. Some really cool interviews on this podcast. Thanks, Diesel225. That episode happened to be Pops the Club. They're all my favorites. I can't choose one over another, but transforming shame and stigma was very cool. From small and gutsy to big with impact, I'm Laura Whitkoff, and thanks for listening. <laughs>